All right, hello, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Pfeiffer, and today we will be examining a four bar mechanism using the analytic method uh, instead of using a solver. So if we hop on over to our screen here, I'm uh, just going to skip to how I got this picture in here and all the computer trickery. But um, just describing the mechanism here, we have R1, R2, R3, and R4. We're given all the lengths. We know that it is not offset, so therefore theta 1 is equal to 0, and that theta 2 is 30 degrees. Now, um, I ran this in MathCAD, so everything had to be in radians, so I just put in this little factor term, uh, and you'll see that crop in here and there. The other question is, where did this R come from? Well, I know that later on, since I know everything about uh, R2, and R1, I can combine them into one vector, and I happen to choose R2 uh, minus R1 and create a new vector R. So now I've got a smaller loop to work with, and uh, this is a technique that actually paid off a lot more uh, when I got into my higher level physics classes. And uh, once you have a bunch of known things, you can just call them a variable so you don't have to write them over and over again. So uh, moving on. This is just a definition of what I defined R as, R2 minus R1, and then I looked at its X and Y components. Uh, just double checking yourself, making sure that the X, Y component goes up, the X component goes to the left as I think it should, which it does. Then this next part here was uh, simply just a Pythagorean theorem finding the length of the vector R that I created. And Ultimately, we have to go back to what are we working towards? Uh, well, we want to work towards this vector loop equation down here um, because I don't know theta 3 and I don't know theta 4. So I need to find a way to get rid of one of those. But first, I needed to know everything about my known vectors. And my known vectors here, you have your x, y components, your uh, magnitude. And this part really took me quite a while to figure out just the programming for it. Um, and even my calculator spit out a negative answer. And the important thing to notice is that I'm in quadrant 2. So when I was getting that negative answer, I had to add 180 degrees to it. So this would be what your calculator would spit out if it didn't have the 180 there. Um, but either way, uh, whether you program it this way or you program it this way, you're still going to end up with the same uh, degree measure. Now. It's important that I don't put the factor term in here because later when I want to use theta r, I have to have it in radians. So that's why I created a separate term to show what it was actually doing and to double check. I also uh, created a Creo sketch to make sure that all of my things were, the one that's in red right now is the angle for theta r that we're talking about and it turns out that I did do it correctly. Um, so, moving on, uh, I just defined this here um, as taking a lot of my terms uh, that I'm going to need later. I probably should move that down so that you can see where that comes from, um, but I'll come back to that. So we make our vector loop, uh, and we want to find theta 3. So the first thing we do is isolate uh, R4 by itself, move it to the other side, and you end up with R plus R3 or R3 plus R. It's commutative, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so what you want to do here is you uh, dot product each side by itself. So you end up with R4 dot R4, and since the cosine and the angle between them is zero, then that term goes away. So we don't need to know theta 4. Then we FOIL this out, um, and you end up with this term right here. And then once I move everything to one side, I end up with this mess here. And uh, because I wanted to take the arc cosine of that and I didn't want to type it all over again, or I guess I could have copied and pasted, but I just wanted to simplify these expressions so you could see where um, the math is coming in here. We're starting with our theta r, and then we're either adding or subtracting this cos the arc cosine of this to isolate theta 3 minus r. Um, so once we isolate that, you move the theta r to the other side, and then you can solve for theta 3. 
One will give you the top solution, the other will give you the bottom solution. I realize we went through that fairly quickly, so we will repeat the process a little more slowly, and I will type out for the unknown variable theta 4, and we will compare that in the end to uh, what the solutions um, solve block would look like. We'll call that theta 4 minus theta r. Now, theta 4 is my unknown variable. The rest of these things I know. And theta 4, if you, or theta r, if you recall, was back here when we had our discussion about uh, uh, the arc tangents. So, when I isolate theta 4 by itself, I'm just going to do this in my head, it's this minus r4 squared plus oops minus r squared all over quantity negative 2 times r times r4. Now I'm getting a little paranoid with the parentheses there, but better that than miss it. So you do this, and then it's the cosine, or a cosine, arc cosine of that mess, and it's going to be theta minus, let's see here, I moved everything over here, so you get plus theta r. We're going to define that as theta 4, 1. It's a good thing I left this in radians, because if I didn't, that would be a problem right now. But then we're going to get our answer of 3.76. Now let's check that um, answer by just doing simply finding out what it is in degrees. It's 216 degrees. Now, if I look down here, I used a little solve block just to double check my answers, and I also measured them in Creo. Um, so that one I know is correct. Now if I want the second solution to that, it's theta 4, 1. Then I would have the negative of all of this stuff. Control Z. Control V. You can see why sometimes it's nicer just to call something A or B or C. Well, that's pretty lazy. I can type type that. <laughs> Plus theta r equals something. And let's not call that theta 4, 1, because it's theta 4, 2. And now you get theta 4, 2 is equal to 117. So now if I change my initial guess here to something close to 120, and this one we said was like around 80-ish, I know I'm cheating a little bit, but then that's the other way to get the second solution. Um, we will find that 117.286, 117.286, all right. Well, we have successfully made it through the four-bar analysis. Uh, again, my name is Dan Pfeiffer, and my email is shown here. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, um, and I look forward to feedback and comments. All right, thank you for watching.